Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're doing some beginner exercises. Lots of people have asked for a new one of these so we're on level 6 now and we're getting slightly tougher. So as normal I'll show the shape and you have a go at modelling it and then I will show you how I modelled it. This time though I'm going to add a step where I show you the topology. So I'll show you the shape and you pause the video, have a go and if you're stuck you can have a look at the topology that I've got and then I will show you how I've made it. And just a quick note, I'm using Blender 2.8. Okay, so the first shape is fairly straightforward. And what might help is that you can see my modifiers on the right hand side. So pause the video and have a go at that. So here's the topology in case that helps. Okay, so it's one of those things you either know or you don't. There's a solidify modifier which will certainly help you in making this object. You can do it without it. And there's of course the subdivision surface modifier which we talked about in the last few episodes. So if I start off with a cube, I'll shift right click to put my cursor about here, shift A to add, and add a cube. Into edit mode with tab, and I've just turned on my shortcut keys down the left hand side here. So in edit mode we can resize it by scaling in the X and scaling in the Y. Now have a quick think, why am I using edit mode to do this rather than object mode, which would accomplish the same thing. And the answer to that would be if I go to the item menu up the top here and I go into object mode again with tab, you can see that my scale has not changed. And that can be really important when you're doing things like adding modifiers, which we are in this case. The modifiers will often modify according to the scale. If your modifier is scaled to anything but one, it can act unexpectedly. So if you didn't do it in edit mode, you can actually press Ctrl A and reset the scale or apply the scale here. So if I scale this in the x-axis slightly, you can see that my x scale is different and modifiers will react to that in a different way. And you can reset it by pressing Ctrl A and then apply scale. And there now they're all back to one, but the shape hasn't changed. Okay, so into edit mode, into face mode with three on our keyboard. I'm going to select this face and this face with shift and press delete and faces. So I've got this point here. I'm now going to select some edges, so two on my keyboard and select these four edges and press Control B for bevel, Control B for bevel. So I'll bring it to around there and I can change my parameters. This might be down the bottom here for you. You can press the little disclosure arrow and you can get the details up that you need. And I've got two segments on. That's probably the only difference from the default. And the last thing that I did was I added a couple of modifiers. The first one I will add is the solidify modifier which is here and the thickness is just here so we can change the thickness we can go outside or inside it doesn't make a lot of difference but you just need to remember which way you're going the next step is to add a subdivision surface modifier and we can see that it makes it all smooth which is good but the edges here go all strange they go all sharp if I bring that above my solidify modifier it changes so it does matter which order you have your modifiers in. So this is adding a subdivision surface modifier first and then making it solid. The other way around, it adds the solidify modifier first and then adds the subdivision and then smooths it out. But because we've got no supporting loops on either side, it makes the edges sharp. And what I did with my other one was press Control R and you can see these supporting loops coming through and making it thick at the end, so Control R and bringing it across. You can up your resolution of your subdivision surface modifier and you can also go back into object mode with tab and press right click and shade smooth and we get something that resembles the other one. But do notice the difference with the order of the modifiers and you can see actually that mine have overlapped here and I'm getting glitches. I could change that by changing the thickness and maybe going outside this time rather than inside where they start overlapping. So it's important to think about these different things. Okay, so let's try the next object. I'll hide this one by pressing H and show the next one. So this is taken from my GoPro camera. I thought that would be a good shape to practice on. So have a go at that. Okay, I will show you the topology again. So click on it into edit mode and there's the topology. and of course my modifier. Okay, so we'll try and make this again. I'll shift right click over here, shift A to add a cube, and let's go into edit mode. 
I'll scale in the X to make it a bit smaller around there, I think. And let's just scale it up a touch, maybe in the Z. So scaling the box so it meets the outside of the other one roughly, somewhere around there. So the big trick is how do we get this circle extruding from our object? So first of all, I cut it in half with Control R and then double clicked to make sure my edge loop is right in the center. Then you might think that interface mode, select this face and inset it like this. And then hopefully we can extrude out somehow, but we need some sort of circle there. So I'll undo that step. We need a few more points to make a circle. So first of all, Control R there and double left click and Control R this side round, double left click. So I've inserted two edge loops and I have now got enough points to make a circle. So holding shift and selecting each of these edges. So I need to make a sphere out of this. And there's a really useful command if I press F3, to sphere. This is how you can search for commands. And to sphere is shift alt S. But before I do that, I'll press escape to come out of that. I need to scale this in the Z axis first. And I need to make it fairly square in order for it to work. So somewhere around there. You can be fairly rough at this point. Now I can press Shift Alt S and move my mouse to the side. So that's the to sphere command. And I've created a nice circle. Without making it a square though, you can get an unusual oval instead. So at this point I can press 3 for face mode and select these four faces. E to extrude them out. And I get my sort of lens at the front, probably a bit far that, so G and then X to bring them back slightly. I to insert and E to extrude and pull it backwards. So now we have a low poly GoPro. If I add the subdivision surface now, add modifier, subdivision surface modifier, we get quite a blobby looking camera. So I'm going to need to add proximity loops to sharpen these things up. Now we could control R, bring this across here and keep going around like this. It gets a bit more tricky when we get to this point though. So I'm going to undo this. There's several ways of doing this. You can actually add a bevel modifier as well. So bevel modifiers will take your edges and sharpen them. I'm not going to do that because I think that will overcomplicate things. I'm just going to use the simple command control B on the right edges. So into edge mode, alt left click to select all these edge areas. Notice that one goes inwards though. And select all these edges that I need to bevel. And I'm going to press C now, which is circle select and middle mouse button to undo those selections. And just watch out a bit, there's two selected in there as well. So C, middle mouse button to deselect them. Now with those outside edges selected, control B and create a nice bevel. Now you'll notice that the topology isn't wonderful. Oh, and I've missed an edge, so I'm going to undo that and select that edge. Alt, left click and control B and around there. And what I was going to say is that you'll notice the topology isn't wonderful. It's not too bad actually, but if I only have one segment, then suddenly I've got triangles, which isn't ideal. It's not bad, but it's not ideal. In this case, it's not too bad. So with two segments. So that looks fine. Now we want to grab this edge loop in here. I can left click and hope for the best. And I may have got it or I may not, but I can see it by pressing this button on my subdivision surface modifier just here. Press Control B and then bevel that. Here is good. Now at the edge here, I could bevel the ends or I could just press Control R and bring across an edge loop. This I find more tricky when I've got this mode on. So when I take that off, then you can really see where I'm going with my edge loops. I need to add one in here. So Control R, sharpen that up, Control R and sharpen that area up as well and into object mode we've got something that's fairly similar we can up the resolution of our subdivision surface modifier and we can right click on it and shade smooth in object mode so there we have our kind of gopro camera looking thing it's an old gopro so, so that's what my one looks like <laughs> okay so there's a couple of objects there hopefully you've learned something through this and watch out for more episodes so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time